Hello and welcome everyone, I'm Maddles and welcome to another StarCraft 2 England cast. Today I am looking at a game and it's a really cool game but I'll explain why after I've introduced the two players. In the top right position as the purple Zerg we do have Aces Scarlet. In the lower left as the blue Protoss we have Liquid Hero. So basically the reason I'm doing this game and the reason I decided to hunt it down is I got an email from one of my subscribers saying Maddles, this game between Hero and Scarlet is awesome. If you could find it, it would be good. And it just so happened that there was a game sitting on drop.cc between Hero and Scarlet. So I thought, maybe it's this one. Maybe I'll give it a watch and find out what all the hype is about. And of course, it's good to remind that, that if any of you watching now do have a cool game that you would like me to cast and be one of your own that you'd like me to do a little bit of analysis on, if it's a pro game that you thought was really good, send it to me, let me know, and obviously I'll do my best to cast if I think it's awesome. The place to send it is se2england at hobmail.co.uk, as is up on the screen in the chat there. So, let's get back to this game and what's going on at the moment. Hero, he's got the pylon down. It's potentially going to be a Nexus first, could be a Forge first as well, it depends on how brave he's feeling. This probe will give a bit of information, when is the spawning pool coming down, how many lava are getting banked up, and that's the important thing to be considering, because if you see quite a few lava saved, you can assume that it might be six zerglings, this spawning pool did come down at 14, as a result, if you see the zerglings come out, you want your wall off up, you want the cannon down in time. If you're not seeing any evidence that your opponent is trying to get those quick six zerglings in order to potentially come in and throw off your rhythm, then you're safe. You can go Nexus first if you want to. You can delay your forge a little bit. And for the moment, we do see that quite a lot of minerals actually banked up here, but Hero choosing to go for that forge sees that there are a few lava there, and that might be slightly worrying to him. Instead, though, Scarlet actually just got down a very, very quick natural hatchery. He came down at 15. So that's why we saw that actually there aren't that many drones out, and that would be the concerning thing for Hero because he doesn't know what's coming on. We do have four Zerglings now on their way. So Forge first, the Overlord coming in, sees the Nexus. It was Forge then Nexus. So Scarlet is aware that Hero's economy is slightly slower. The Probe, though, being forced back due to the four Zerglings, which are somewhere coming out there. So because of this, Hero's like, no, pull back, hold the Watchtower. Let's see what's coming across. And holding this Watchtower is a really smart move because then you see whether all those Zerglings are streaming across and if you need to quickly build an additional gateway or anything like that. But, as we see, only two Zerglings there. As a result, Hero is fairly comfortable. The other two Zerglings will probably come and check around here. They're already checking around the back in case there's any kind of cannons. And this is all very good play by Scarlet. The Overlord coming through. Needs to know, can I secure this third base safely? The drone is on its way. It's going to be a bit later than the 4 minute mark. Around 4 minute 20, 4 minute 25. And the reason for that is because there were four Zerglings as opposed to only two. So, yep, we should see a thrust down now, just, yeah, 425 as I thought it might be. This is actually quite interesting here from Hero, actually. This gateway is slightly more pronounced than you'd usually see it. And while that may not seem like a huge deal, it means that there's a slightly concave surface to it, as opposed to being a flat wall off. That means that if there's a big zergling or roach push, they will get a better attack angle, meaning you'll die quicker. That could potentially be problematic to Hero should Scarlet try and apply that pressure. And I know it seems like a really minor thing, but at this level of play, you really have to be looking at these tiny, tiny things and how they could influence later on. The other thing I'm loving from Scarlet, though, is these Zerglings. Absolutely brilliant. Every Zerg player, please learn from this. Put some Zerglings outside your opponent's natural. It lets you see some really important information. Firstly, what's coming out of this, the gateway? Secondly, is the Forge researching anything? Because if the Forge is researching an upgrade, you can straight away narrow down, maybe this isn't a Mortal Sentry all in, maybe it's a gateway push, but I know it is a ground-based push as opposed to a Stargate play. And what Hero is doing here is very intelligent, pushing back so this can't be seen. And as we've got now, it is going to be a Stargate from Hero, actually. And the reason that is really important and why the Zealot, which may have seemed such a minor point that you could have missed, is by pushing back these Zerglings, you hide information from Scarlet. Scarlet, even with the Overlord, has no clue whether this Forge is researching something. And if you don't know about that, you don't know whether it's a ground push or whether you're at risk from the Stargate. So I expect to see Scarlet throw down the Rotron and Evolution Chamber shortly anyway, due to the lack of knowledge. You have to be extra careful if you don't know what's going down. The Overlord, just sitting out here ready to sacrifice itself in, maybe a little bit later. We've got more Zergans coming to clear out the Watchtower. Scarlet desperately wants to take back this map control. Desperately needs to see what's coming out. And the other thing that Scarlet can't see, of course, is 
There's nothing coming out of this gateway. That gateway is doing nothing at the moment. That immediately tells you it's not going to be an immortal sentry all in. There's no way. You'd, you'd still be producing stuff out of that gateway near constantly. So that is a big, big giveaway. We do have the roadway coming down. There's also a void ray for heroes. A void ray a lot more uncommon compared to, say, a phoenix. But for Scarlet, the evolution chamber and the roach warren is on its way down. So that means the spore callers are available, roaches are available, she's protected against most things. The hatchery there as well now, so a macro hatch is en route. The voidway is going to be revealed as it goes to kill this overlord very quickly. And Scarlet then has to think how she's going to react. Will it be some more queens? Will it be some spore callers? We will wait and see. For the time being though, the sentry is still sitting there. We do now have the plus one research coming down. So the follow up to this little bit of aggression from Hero is still very open. It's not an all in or anything like that. He's preparing for a lot of different options by getting the upgrades. Plus one missile attack is coming down. We have the spore callers getting chucked in there as well. So spore callers should come in the natural. There we go. And there's one of the third. You don't actually need a spore caller in the main for the simple reason that you're not going to be easily able to sneak in a void way and a hold on a phoenix into the main base without exposing yourself massively to queens. A few overlords are unfortunately going to go down. This one will supply block Scarlet. That is incredibly frustrating and will delay a lot of stuff. The overlords only just getting built now. There is one more in the field as well. So if this was able to get killed, it could be very problematic. The first phoenix has now. The second phoenix has now gone out. We got third on the way. How many are we going to see? Four is possible. There we go. So the fourth one coming down. And behind this, hero just rushing up to Colossus Tech. He's got his robotic spay down. He's got no additional, uh, these three additional gateways rather. So, four gates, robe, he went basically one gate, Stargate, Robo, three additional gateways into the robotics bay. Very, very focused on getting up the tech, forcing Scarlet back by just having these units here. The Observer getting great information as well. These Phoenix have not yet been revealed as far as I've seen. I don't know if that Overlord managed to spot it there, but regardless, there is just the Spore Crawler. The Queen can get taken out by the Phoenix very comfortably, and this could do an awful lot of damage. The, the Roaches are seeing a lot. The Creep Spread getting completely denied. Of course, Scarlet very, very good at spreading Creep throughout the game. So this is good planning by Hero. Good long-term thinking. He's going to go and try and take out the Queen now. With the lift, that Queen will definitely get taken down, but it's slightly out of position. Unfortunately, though, the Spore Crawler is able to hit the Lifting Phoenix. That is something you do not want going down. But straight away, Scarlet builds, hey, I need some more Spore Crawlers now. This third is undefended. I've got to be careful. The Observer also needs to be very, very careful not to take any damage because you don't want that going down at any stage of the game. In terms of Ground Force, Scarlet getting up an awful lot of roaches, gearing up, ideally, for a big counter push. It could be very, very powerful indeed, but as we're seeing, we've got the first Colossus on its way down, we've got extended Thermal Lance coming down, and we've also got an Immortal. That means that Sc Hero is very well defended against anything Scarlet can really throw at him. Infestors on the way down for the Zerg player as well. Spore Callers are moving, they are trying to get in a good position, trying to make sure everything is nicely defended. All of the Overlords hugging around this Spore Crawler as well, you don't want to lose any more. And as we can see here, Scarlet already having lost a lot more than that of her opponent. The Overlord, which was Creep spreading up the third base, has been taken down. This is a really, really good trick as well, that every single Zerg player should do. Make sure you generate creep at the third base because even after the Overlord's dead, which forces you to pull your army, it maintains there for at least another minute or so. So that in itself delays your opponent's strategy. And as we see Hero, Hero actually in a really comfortable spot. He's got the map vision being given, he's got the map control, all being utilized by this early Stargate. That has given him complete dominance on the map and forcing Scarlet's army back, giving him all the scouting information needed. He's also teched up. He's got the Colossus out. His second Colossus should have just popped. There we go. And he's also got quite a sizable ground force. Four sentries, six zealots, and the immortal is a nice supporting force. And Scarlet, in all honesty, is going to struggle to push into this, especially with a cannon there and not a very large force. As a result, Hero's safe. He can secure his third base. And meanwhile, is going to do a good job of denying this base. A couple of investors could potentially die here. Unfortunately, the Phoenix goes down. The Spore Caller and Queen able to do a great amount of damage. More investors coming across. So, as we can see, this air harassment is getting shut down. We've got the Roaches pushing in here, actually. Nearly missed that action. But, as we can see, Force Fields are great. The Colossus are able to stay up and deal great damage. And with all of that, Hero, he's kept his third base. He hasn't lost too much. And he's happy. He knows this fourth base timing as well. We see the Hive on its way for Scarlet, as well as the Spire. You get those two together, they both take 100 seconds. But timing-wise, very, very normal. So Hero 
he's going to be absolutely ace right now. He should be getting up to more gateways, so there we go. That is good. He's also getting, uh, still producing the Colossus. He's getting the plus two Protoss ground weapons. And all in all, with Blink as well, he's in a very comfortable spot to deal with all of this. And of course, once the Brute Lord tech is revealed, once Hero is aware that it's coming down, which he should be at some point, He's already got the Stargate out in order to get the Fleet Beacon and therefore the Mothership tech. So it is all piecing together. Hero's build very, very refined, very, very nice, and suited to pretty much every situation. So this is really, really good by him. We do have the Gateway Wall off at the natural for Hero. That means that Zergling Rumbys that Scarlet attempted just now aren't going to be successful. It means that it's a lot easier to defend your bases. We've also got the War Prism on its way. That's going to allow for quick reinforcements because there's no proxy pylons out for Hero at the moment. Scarlet, though, taking all of these bases. Spread out. That is a really good move to make right now. If you spread out your bases, your opponent has to commit quite a lot to going to trying to engage them. Hive is done, Great Aspire on his way out, a few Corruptors hitting as well for now. The Worker Count, let's take a quick look at that, very equal actually. Only a handful between them, and that in itself could be a problem. So many Speedlings on their way through now though. The Zeta does see all of that briefly, so of course Scarlet able to get into a nice position. Hero, uh, Hero rather able to get a nice position. Scarlet does see, of course, not too much. Knows that there's a Stalker holding the Watchtower. Hero covering for any pushes from the natural, knowing he's safe moving forward here, and suddenly Scarlet is in a very awkward position where Hero can just start pushing through. The spine quarters are not going to be up in time. We do have the Infestors coming in. The Colossus are, of course, the important part of this composition, though. The Corruptors coming in. They're going to get focused down, ideally, by the Stalkers. Need to make sure that these Colossi do stay up. Three getting micro back. The Force Foots are very, doing a great job of basically pinning back all of the Zerglings, allowing the Infested Terrans to go down insanely fast. The Zerglings getting cleaned up as well. Hero pulling ahead now in terms of supply. The Corruptors do manage to get a kill on one of the Colossus, but two more Colossi are still up there and happily engaging. Plus three, missile, plus three ground weapons on the way down for Hero, as I speak. And of course the reinforcing cor Corruptors may be able to get another Colossus, but as you can see the Stalker's doing a great job of focusing those down. Scarlet behind in the supply count. The reinforcements constantly coming in for Hero, he's doing a great job of Blink Micro. The reinforcements for Scarlet really are quite low, and as a result, this force is just getting stronger and stronger. The Colossus, the Colossi being micro back, making sure they don't go down one, nearly falls, but a great bit of dropship micro keeps that alive, and that is just fantastic. Minor little bits of play that really result in Hero being able to push forward. Keeping these Colossus up is so important to his play right now. Banking up a lot of minerals. The Warp Spring, though, coming down very, very soon indeed. The fourth place now down for Scarlet. Meanwhile, behind all of this, Hero is getting ready to secure his own fourth. So, he's still expanding behind this. The top left base for Scarlet has not yet been discovered, though. So, that is something that could be a saving grace. But, of course, Scarlet pumping into his army, which really is not getting much smaller. Yes, a Colossus does now fall. But at what cost? Scarlet really tumbling terms of supply. Only two infestors out, no corruptors, no way to deal with all these stalkers, and is forced to GG out. So that play by Hero was absolutely brilliant. And I tried to run you all through the different steps, the different processes, all the little minor things that Hero really thought out and allowed him to go on and win that game so convincingly. Thank you very much for watching though everyone. If you did enjoy, make sure you like the video, leave a cool comment and subscribe, and I will catch you all tomorrow for yet another new cast. Thank you very much for watching, and bye for now.